Imagine a world millions of years after evolution. This is a new chapter within the story of the dinosaurs. Our modern world is home to an ecosystem of different creatures. Now their future is prehistoric. Imagine being at the seaside or the ocean with the northern lights across the sky, but a pteranodon is flying in the air looking for food. However, there are giant monsters hiding underneath the water. Let me introduce you to the largest marine animal in the Jurassic World franchise is Mosasaurus of Moni. It is a giant marine reptile. And here is how Mosasaurus basically is. Growing up has been like interesting for me when it comes to learning about prehistoric wildlife. But my personality to YouTube is that I can give people ideas on different perspectives on the prehistoric world. And so I was like becoming an artist started off with the old sketchpad game and uh, in these remarkable illustrations on uh, dinosaur behavior with other prehistoric creatures is that when I was like looking through these I was looking at the ones particularly that lived on the water and uh, this is one of the illustrations I drawn this is an illustration of a mosasaur called Tylosaurus. Mosasaurs are surprisingly related to monitor lizards and snakes because the way that their body is pretty much look alike like a, a Komodo dragon but that is more capable in water than on land and it has a snake-like tongue similar to modern snakes like king cobras or anacondas or any kind type of snakes in the world. As you can see, these creatures are completely different from the Jurassic World style because not all mosasaurs have to be monstrous reptilian creatures but they are more like streamlined animals with tail flukes similar to sharks but put it upside down and they 
unique personalities with other relationships with other mesosaurs seems to be completely different. These particular marine reptiles are completely different from what we're seeing today. A is that uh, these actual illustrations give us, give us a glimpse, not a whole look, uh, well maybe the whole look, uh, but a glimpse on Mesosaur accuracy and the Jurassic World version is completely inaccurate because it has an enormous size with teeth coming out from its lips, lips and and it has much more roughy scaly skin where it should have completely smooth scaly skin and sometimes they can shed the skin by the help of different species of fish and gives people an idea on how a mesosaurus would have naturally shed their skin is that once a mesosaur is a close to the surface in a coraly area, different species of fish start to remove some of its skin and then the mesosaur basically walls around in the water so then the complete animal will have a new look depending on how many scaly skin would have left left while being in shredded at the same time. The Mosasaur is hunting for food in the water because it is more likely built as a assassin. The marine reptile searches for prey, whether it's at, at the surface or at the bottom of the ocean if it depends how much oxygen it has by holding its breath with its lungs and then and for like several minutes they can just come up to the water and have a nice fresh breath but surprisingly there are flying reptiles in the sky Meet the long-crested Tyrannodon, which is the most popular pterosaur in the Jurassic Park franchise. People recognize these creatures by their crests and their beaks. But people keep mistaking them as pterodactyls, even though they are, are from a group of flying reptiles called the pterosaurs. These creatures do not have scaly skin, but they more likely have fur-like feathery materials called pycnophibers, which helps the animals to fly with their large wings. Now here is an illustration when it comes to the sexual dimorphism between male and female species. This is a pterosaur called Hatigotorex. The male has a big crest on its head while the female has only a short crest as from the head to the end of its beak. Now, these particular creatures look very different is because that the males were more colorful than the females so it gives people an idea when it comes to sexual dimorphism and between male and female pterosaurs. And another thing to talk about Tyrannodon is that they are highly noticeably sexually dimorphic, with the males having a larger crest and the females having a shorter crest. The males with the large crests appeared in the Jurassic Park universe with Jurassic Park 3 and the short crest Tyrannodons that is recognized in Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom and in Dominion because they are most likely female with their shorter crests. Mm. 
flying reptiles control the skies. While on the land, dinosaurs basically lived on land with other animals, such as humans for example, in this modern world. And in the seas, marine reptiles control the depths of the oceans while living with other animals such as whales, sharks, octopuses, or different species of fish and other species of mammals that are perfectly capable to live in the oceans. And here's a dolphin-like reptile called Ichthyosaurus. Ichthyosaurus is highly recognizable due to the fossils that are being discovered during the Victorian era by a wonderful woman named Mary Angen. Mary Angen is a extraordinary, a good fossil hunter because she usually finds fossils of ammonites which are prehistoric squid but with shells on their backs and their shells can be in different shapes and sizes some of them um, have shells that are in the shape as a paper clip which may sound bizarre but is an actual thing in the documentary series in Prehistoric Planet Mary Agin discovers remains of marine creatures like animalites and also she discovered fossils of ichthyosaurs whilst they are being discovered in cliffs which can be a dangerous place because normally rocks will fall off from the cliffs which can cause people to injure themselves or even get killed by these erosions And she has discovered other creatures as well, like a flying reptile named Dimorphodon, which is highly recognizable as a pterosaur from Jurassic World and Fallen Kingdom and also in Dominion as well. And she has made a, a remarkable discovery on a marine reptile known as a plesiosaur. Plesiosaurs come in all shapes and sizes, depending on the time period of the Jurassic and in the Cretaceous era as well, from 150 to about 66 million years while living in the oceans continue to evolve in different ways in their modern lives. But marine reptiles have a different strategy when it comes to birth with their babies. This is an image of an ichthyosaur discovered in Germany. It clearly shows a baby at the midway between them in the mother's birth canal. They were only born tail first and the mothers had to give birth while Oh, they're close to shallow water to the surface so then they can breathe Eve, without having the risk of drowning or having the baby to drown itself due to has to swim fast in the water and have a lung full of air and then get back to the sea to have his life hiding in corals from predators such as shark, sharks or even pliosaurs which are different when we reptiles before mosasaurs were evolved. Ichthyosaurs are completely different when we reptiles. You have pliosaurs like like Pleurodon for example, and plesiosaurs like Chimorosaurus. But ichthyosaurs are different because these animals well, it almost looks like dolphins, but with a vertical tail, kind of like a shark. So then it gives people's idea on converting evolution, because as dolphins had a more flatter tail, while the ichthyosaurs has a more vertical tail. 
and their faces are completely different. Aphiosaurus almost has a lizard-like face. It is but with a straighter snout, and the dolphin has a shorter muzzle, oh, and a completely different head shape like a bottlenose dolphin, for example. The Aphiosaur group is looking for a place to find some food because there are many things that feed on fish. But there are other marine creatures that are living, living beside them. And they have long necks with four flippers that are different to the Ichthyosaurus. Plesiosaurus, they are long necked titans of the seas with four flippers with sometimes long tails and even long necks with a long skull full of teeth and they lived in family groups. The flying reptiles, the pteranodons, are, are migrating to the sea to capture fish in the water. But there are other creatures that are going hunting as well. Like the sickle called beasts, velociraptors. And they are looking for live prey. But they aren't the only predators in this, this prehistoric environment. There are other predators. Creatures like the Giga Notosaurus. The giant southern lizard. And he is looking for a meal as well. Hunted and prey. And King Pelosaurus is known as a giant southern lizard because of its size and the shape of its teeth is more like knife like in its serrations. And Velociraptor can be successful in hunting because there are pack hunters like wolves and their claws on their feet as she helped them to kill their prey within a matter of moments. And these creatures will continue the next generation to build in and in on the population of these dinosaurs in the Jurassic World universe. While I was visiting the Bristol Museum in Bristol, I was amazed by a number of specimens of aviosaur skeletons 
and even some pictures and some animations about these remarkable giants of the sea. It does have one particular creature that I pointed it out on this video clip on the map with a pliosaurus named Doris. Now based on the looks of the model of the creature itself, it clearly shows a bite mark in one of its flippers as from an attack from another pliosaur to the identification of its bite marks. And that is the interesting way of bringing marine reptiles back to life through art and design. The Mesosaur was doing fine in the water until tragedy strikes. that mosasaurs have been fighting underwater for territory reasons and sometimes they can even drown other mosasaurs to protect their areas for access for food, have the rights to mate or any of, or any of that sort of stuff. Now plesiosaurs are completely different animals and they can also protect their own young from predators like Mesosaurus. This is an illustration I've done with Tarangisaurus and Mesosaurus called Kai Kaifu. Now these creatures could have protected their young by using their long necks with their mouthful of teeth to pretty much peck the Mesosaurus so that they will get away without getting a proper kill which is gonna go for the young because they are more vulnerable than the adults. 66 million years ago the last of the marine reptiles died out while other animals mostly the smaller creatures are continuing to survive that is the extinction of the dinosaurs. But the Jurassic World franchise will bring more films about these remarkable animals and with human characters as people who have experienced it like never before. But these creatures will still remain in our hearts for as long as we can remember and, con and continue their success as to bring more films with these incredible animals so that people can remember them for the rest of their lives in our modern day planet Earth. The Futurist Prehistoric is a series about how 
Jurassic World's dinosaurs have lived in our modern environment and how are they changed through our, our life on this planet and how they will survive with their new looks in the Jurassic World franchise. Join me on the final episode of this series where we will learn how a dinosaur has changed cinema history forever.